Welcome to Sudley Church on this wonderful Sunday morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> we had a wonderful time in Italy, and I'll tell you all about it sometime. Maybe I'll do a slideshow after I figure out what all the pictures I need, to, which ones I can show. <laughs> But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, I was glad to be back. I'm glad to be at Sudley. And also, I'm, I'm here to tell you that there, even if you're in Italy, there's no reason to miss church. We were able to go to the 8 o'clock service, which was at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Italy, both Sundays that we were gone. And it was the highlight of our week. We really enjoyed that. So thanks for putting that together. We just got to have a Zoom call. Uh, the announcements today, uh, we're, we're still on our Ending Hunger by the Hundreds campaign. It's still underway. We'll be collecting dried rice, beans, grains, and cereal products. All items donated are given to the Haymarket Food Pantry to help end hunger in our neighborhood. Our next egg casserole delivery date is October 14th. We will supply a hot breakfast to the residents at the Serve Shelter in Manassas on the second Saturday of each month. We need three people to make two casseroles each. Sign-up sheets are in the fellowship hall. Please consider, consider helping out in this valuable ministry. Last chance to register for these life-saving tests, the Lifeline screening, which Betsy and I will be there on Monday, the 23rd. We're kind of... Well, I'm kind of looking forward to it, but I'm kind of not looking forward to it after I just came back from Italy and ate all that olive oil, but maybe that'll help. Um, it's $159 for all five tests. It's Monday the 23rd. Five quick screens for stroke and cardiovascular disease. Only a couple spots left. See the bulletins for info. Adult Bible study. Join us for adult Bible study every Sunday at 9 a.m. They are studying what it means to be a United Methodist Christian. Books are available, just show up. See Bobby Marshall for more information. Women in faith. Of course, you know that the men's yard sale was yesterday. That means next Saturday is women's in faith on the 21st. I think it's the 21st. Come and join us in chopping and preparation. The soup will be the sale for the following Saturday. Mm. I can taste it already. Wednesday night Bible study starts on Wednesday, September 25th, not the 11th, at 6.30. We'll meet there Wednesday, except Sudley Supper Nights, which is next, next, next Wednesday. First year is be won by Associate Minister Nick Abate, and the title, You and the Holy Spirit. Sudley Supper, the first summer is this Wednesday, the 18th at 6 p.m. Come and enjoy fellowship and a home-cooked meal of... Italian favorites. <laughs> if you would like to cook a meal for the congregation, call the office. Okay. Administrative Council will meet this Monday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Open meeting, all are welcome. We will just be discussing the administration of the church and upcoming church events. Trustees, trustees will meet this afternoon. We are still looking for three new trust volunteers, trustees, to fill upcoming positions. If you're curious about how the church runs and the management of our financial and physical resources, all are welcome to attend the meeting. I just, I'm just so happy that, to have Sudley. It's just a wonderful place to come back to when you've been away for two weeks, and I still feel like it's home. But let's bring in the light of Christ, please. Please rise for our opening hymn, Rejoice in God's States, number 708.
be seated. If you have a prayer request or would like to leave your contact information with us, please use the cards in the back of the pews. So, what happens when we pray for others? We experience an unselfish expression of love as we live out the holy command to love one another. We find ourselves not focused entirely on ourselves, but on showing care and concern for others, and we remind ourselves of our own need for gratitude for the things we have, especially as we ask God to intervene and help those who are among us that are facing life's struggles. This week, I ask you to pray for Sudley and our request from the DS for a new pastor, that they would bring a, a leader to us to help us through our journey with God. With our thoughts on those we just mentioned and adding prayers for those who remain unnamed, let's go to God in silent prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayers as we call out to you. Hear our words and bring comfort to us. Let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have the children's message from Miss Katie. Hello, children of God. All right, have you ever worked in a garden before? or been around plants. What kind of plants do you like the best? Flowers, trees, fruits, vegetables? All of those things are plants and all plants have a few things in common. For one thing, all plants have these. Do you know what these are? These are called roots. Now, when seeds are planted, roots go down into the ground, burrowing into the soil. After the roots go down and plant themselves, the stems and leaves and things can grow up out of the ground. No matter how high the plant gets, it will always have those roots that allow it to receive nourishment and grow. And sometimes the roots are even bigger than the plant. The roots connect the plant to its source of life. That's great for plants, but what do you think it means to be rooted in Christ? Does that even make sense? How can we be rooted in our faith or connected that firmly to Jesus? The Bible tells us that we are to be rooted in Christ's love. In the letter Paul wrote to Ephesians, he encouraged them to dwell on that. This means that we get our spiritual ability to grow and live from knowing how much Jesus loves us. We have a firm foundation in that. We can be absolutely confident that Christ gives us all we need because he gave himself for us. We know he loves us enough to die for us. In fact, his love for us is bigger than we can understand. Think about some really big plants, like oaks or pine trees. They can get massive. They can be so high that you have to tilt your head back just to see the top. Well, the love of God has, the love God has for us is much bigger than that. And it's much deeper than the deepest roots we can imagine. We are covered in and supported by that love, even though we don't fully know what it means. But Jesus can help us there too. He promises to be with us and to guide our hearts. So how do we put these roots down? What do you think? What might encourage and nourish our faith? We can pray. We can read the Bible. We listen to other Christians and go to church. There are many wonderful ways that we stay rooted in Jesus. Many times people talk about roots in terms of family or a heritage connection. We know that we are in God's family and our connection to him is worth more than anything else. 
Let's pray about that. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to be rooted in his love. Help us to stay firmly connected to you so we can grow in our faith. Help us to understand how important that is. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scriptures today come from Psalms, Romans, Ephesians, and Revelations. So I promise they're not too long. Psalm 116, number 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Romans 8.27 As God who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Ephesians 1 verse 18 So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Revelations 5, 8. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Revolutions 19.8 To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And lastly, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. So at this time, I'd like to just say a word that we are so fortunate to have an associate minister to get us through times of, of need. And here he is. Associate Minister Nick Abate. Yay. That's quite the introduction. You get a feeling I'm going to talk about saints today? <laughs> All right, am I too loud? Am I echoing? Good. Okay, I'm good? Good. Well, before I go into saints, I was experienced quite early in my life with the space program. I worked on rocket propulsion systems right out of college, and yes, I'm a rocket scientist. Um, I dealt with a number of astronauts at the time, and they told me about the early, early space program. In the early days of the space program, we had astronauts, but we had monkeys. And we all remember the monkeys went into space before the humans did. Well, Dr. Werner von Braun says it's time that we have a human participate in the space program. Remember, Werner von Braun was the one who said, early to bed, early to rise, and work like hell and advertise. <laughs> and that was his motto, and that's how he got NASA pushed along in funding, because he advertised successes. But be that as it may, it was going to be the first human mission with the monkey. And the monkey was trained extensively, and the human was kind of not really trained. Adam's laughing already. <laughs> and uh, they put the human on the spacecraft, and they gave him a book and said, these are your instructions when you're in space. And the monkey just seemed quite calm, and they launched off and went into space. And once the spacecraft had separated, the monkey's throwing switches, and he's doing this, and he's reorienting the spacecraft. And the astronaut says, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm supposed to read the book. And the monkey's throwing switches in it. And he opens the book, and it says, feed the monkey. <laughs> well, we got a bigger laugh at the 8 o'clock service. <laughs> Today's sermon. The message is on saints. On November 3rd this year, we'll be celebrating All Saints Day. But Sister Catherine will be giving the message that day. 
and she says she's going to come to say on the third of November. I am just now trying to see how I can relate what I think. <laughs> what she's saying, it takes a lot of time and energy to prepare these sermons itself. And without a pastor, an ordained pastor who has 30 years experience or whatever, we all fall back and figure out weeks in advance what we're going to say. Where's Fred? Fred's back there. Fred takes two weeks to prepare messages, and, he, and he's going to be doing it uh, next week itself. The message today may be considered an oldie and goodie. I've used this before. My favorite stories on saints relates as follows. A young boy and his grandfather were in a large cathedral and looked up at the stained glass picture windows, which were stained glass images of saints. The boy asked, who are they? And grandfather said, they are saints. And the young boy said, oh, saints are people that light shines through. That light shines through. Now, you know, I think I can really stop at this point and not even talk anymore and sit down because that is really a phenomenal type message that saints are where light shines through. Wikipedia's definition of a saint is a person who is recognized as having exceptional degree of or closeness to God. However, the use of the term saints depends on the contents of the denomination. In Catholic, Eastern, and Orthodox, Anglican and Oriental Orthodox and Lutheran doctrine, all are faithful to considered to be saints, but some are considered worthy of greater honor or emulation. Official ecclesiastic recognition and public veneration is conferred on some denominational saints through the process of canonization. The Roman Catholic Church canonizes saints after an extensive review process and with at least three verifiable miracles have occurred as a result of praying for the intersection of the name saint to our Lord. Now, what does that all mean? That means that when you pray to a saint while it's being studied, and they're not a saint as yet, but these verifiable miracles are that when someone has had a saintly type life and you believe they're going to be a saint and you pray to them for intercession, such as, dear Lord, I have incurable cancer. They've given me eight weeks to live and the doctors are saying no help. And I pray to Saint whatever name or not even a saint at the time. I pray to Joseph, for example, and I'm automatically cured. That is, and it can be verified, that is one of those type saints. My father's favorite story, I'm going to go off script. My father's favorite story is the loss of the house keys. And I may have said this before. My father in Brooklyn, New York, was very, very protective. Anytime he went out, he locked the door, three different locks and everything else. And he had his keys in his pocket. And then he went shopping and he came back and with groceries, his hands were full. And he was carrying an umbrella, but it didn't rain that day. And my mother opened the door and he went in the house and put his stuff down and then he was looking for his keys. Now in Brooklyn, lost house keys could be dangerous. You know, you could have an uninvited visitor that night with your keys because you've unlocked, they have the keys to the house. My father grabbed my nephew, they went up and down the street, they searched the gutters, they went back to the grocery store, they wondered maybe the keys got kicked under one of the shelves or on their hands and knees looking for these keys. Couldn't find him. That night, my father sat up all day by the door, just waiting for some bad guy to come into the house because he knew he lost those keys and it's his fault. And next day, he searched, searched the neighborhood for keys, couldn't find them. The next day, he went to the church and says, I'm lost. And he called on St. Anthony, the patron saint of lost. And he prayed, dear St. Anthony, help me find my house keys. I am miserable. I'm not sleeping at night. Well, nothing happened. Next day, he gets up. It's time to go back to the grocery store because Italians like fresh milk, fresh bread every day or so from the grocery store itself. And it was <laughs> so he carried the umbrella. 
went outside, he says it was raining. And as he opened the umbrella, the keys came out and hit him in the head. Now, what had happened was, is that with the three days earlier, he was carrying the umbrella, his arms were full, he had the key. My mother opened the door instead of him, and the keys must have fallen into the umbrella. And there the umbrella sat on the porch for three days, while Dad searched the entire neighborhood for those keys and stayed up two nights. But he went to the church, he bowed, lit the candles in front of St. Anthony, and the next day, the keys came out of the umbrella and hit him on the head. I'm probably going to get in trouble for telling that story. <laughs> we all know a saint who is attributable to a verifiable miracles in our lifetime. Let's talk about Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Now, this is a person that in our lifetime that we heard many, many times in news broadcasts or the president visits or the pope visits. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, for 50 years, she and her order roamed the cities of the streets in Calcutta, caring for the poor, the sick, and the dying. She started the religious order Sisters of the Poor. It is reported that many, many times in Calcutta, holding the dead, the dying, and dying in her, eye, in her arms, or lifting them up and carrying them to the hospital that she built. She was called to heaven at the age of 87. With a relatively short period thereafter, six years, I'm just raising this higher. Six years after her death, she was beatified by the Pope and by the Catholic Church. Six years. And named Blessed Teresa by the Catholic Church. To be beatified six years after her death is a remarkable short time period. And for the because at times you hear, hold that thought. At times you hear saints being named saints 300, 400 years later after their death. Six years after her death, she was beatified. And equally remarkable, 13 years after her death, in 2016, she was canonized as a saint and proclaimed Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Saints, they're in our lifetime. United Methodists believe in saints, but do not in the same manner believe in saints as the Roman Catholic Church does. We all revere Matthew, Paul, John, Luke, and other early followers of Jesus as saints. And a countless number of United Methodist Church are named after saints. We have Saint Luke, the Patriot Saint of Healing. Remember, Saint Luke was a physician. We as Methodists do not pray to saints, nor do we believe that they serve as me mediators to our Lord. United Methodists believe that there is one God and there is also one mediator between God and humankind and that is Christ Jesus. He himself in the human form who gave himself up as ransom for all. I took that from 1 Timothy 2, 5 to 6. United Methodists may call people saints because they exemplify the Christian life. In this sense, every Christian who is a follower of Christ can be considered a future saint. We all know friends, relatives, and others that have given up so much and done so much that they should be considered at the time of their death saints. We often hear the term, my saintly mother. And why? Because they do more than is possible. They teach us, they train us, they take us, take us to church. They work extra jobs so we can go to school. We all have heard the term, my saintly mother. What does in communion of saints really mean. And we had that in our prayers. The fellowship and communion of saints is the expression of that whole reality of church. It is explicitly within this community that we find ourselves most often experiencing the forgiveness of sins. So what are we saying is we see ourselves as followers of the Lord Jesus and life examples set forth by these saints. We're following Jesus, but we're also following saints, the examples that they set for us, the martyrs, St. Peter, 
denied Christ three times, but yet died on a cross upside down, crucified. St. Peter. We believe in the power of this faithful, saintly, saintly community to strengthen our resolve and faith, our commitment to avoid sin. When I hear of the saints, the Christians of the past, I'm connected even more directly to that cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and who were saintly followers of Christ. And we align ourselves in the fellowship with them today. Remember, we say every week in the creed, we are in communion with the saints. We are in communion of the saints. Saints. Thank you. Amen. Amen. My favorite saint is Saint Nick. <laughs> At this time, will the ushers come forward for the offertory? And remember the, the church, the lights, the building, the air conditioning, all take lots of patience and Please give it to us. Amen.
So the ushers, let's take the light of Christ. I ask you today to go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know that he will guide you in all you do. Have a good week, everybody. Wait.